We are going to look at the differences between Angular and React. I'm actually going to do a comparison. I'm going to sort of score each one as we go down these different facets, these different things that we could have, but sometimes we don't have in React. As we know, Angular is a much more fully fledged framework and React is, is more of a just a view layer. But I'm going to talk about all the different areas and I'm going to talk about it from the perspective as someone who teaches UI architecture and teaches how to build enterprise scale applications in any framework, I'm going to basically go into the real differences between these. Okay. So the first thing I think we should talk about is dependency management. And dependency management is critically important in a UI app because what it allows you to do is to change some of the contextual information inside that app as the app loads and make it configurable. So for example, we may want to change things like the time configuration, because when we actually run our UI app, we will want to pull time uh, from the browser. We will want to plug in that will pull time from the browser and things like languages. But when we actually run it in a test context, we don't want to pull time from the browser because we may not have a browser available when we run the test. We would actually want to lock the time down into a static configuration. And so dependency, the dependency management inside a framework is really important. And in Angular, you actually get an inbuilt, what we call a dependency the injection uh, tool and an inversion of control container is built into Angular. Uh, so we'd say IOC. What that allows us to do is to create configurable dependencies which can be changed and as the application runs they can be changed dynamically. Okay, So we would say that Angular sort of has that inbuilt but it's also important to do it in React. But the difference in React is that if we want to use an IOC container we are ultimately going to have to use and the props and high order components and hooks to enable this to happen. Now I know this because this is what we teach in our UI Architecture Academy, which I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about at the end, but we actually need to use the, the, the dependency injection, we need to use it in a slightly different way. But it can be done, but it does require an external plugin. It does require us to go off and to find an inversion of control container and implement it, and it, we will need to have a deep understanding of how React works in terms of the internals in order to use it. So, you, so it is important and you can do it, it's just a lot easier with a lot easier out of the box. The second thing is validation. Um, now we're going to talk about just validation uh, is alongside its sister forms because both of them are, are quite tightly coupled. In Angular uh, we have a very robust system for doing forms and validation. The reason that it's it, it, Angular is, is good at this is because everything is inbuilt and when you have forms and validation built into a UI framework you actually need to be able to sort of intermediately store state. So as the user's typing the validation is done in real time and there are lots of different states that a validation can be in. It can be, you know, they haven't entered any information, they are entering information, they've finished entering information. And so validation really needs to be tightly coupled to state at some point. The reason that Angular is quite good at this is because the Angular team have built all of this together and so they understand that validation and state and all these things and the way that works can be integrated into a single uh, way of doing it. And they have different ways of doing it. They do it with reactive forms and they do it with another approach, etc. So Angular is is really powerful at getting this right and React isn't so good at doing this and um, because React leaves the concept of state uh, doesn't have any validation tools built in. It doesn't even have any way to, uh, if it, any you know robust way to do forms. You just have to do it through the mechanism of the markup and HTML. Now that doesn't mean you can't do it in React, but it does mean you're going to have a lot more difficulty in doing it, and you need to have a better grasp on the architecture of a UI app, the good architecture to use with a UI app in order to make this work. And so, for example, you know one of the questions is, you know, would we use Redux? forms in order to power the state mechanism in order to enable some sort of validation tool to run over our components. And of course, this throws up lots of questions because if we are saying that we use Redux forms, we're now locked into using Redux as our state management. And if we use Redux as our state management, that now introduces lots of other questions about, you know, how do we build our data models and how do we have enough abstraction in our system? So again, you can do it with React, but it does require a plugin to be used. And unless you are very careful, the 
this can quickly turn into a big squiggly mess. All right, the next thing is, you know, on the issue of module federation and micro front ends. Um, in the Angular world, it uses uh, Webpack 5. What that, in, uh, rather on both of them, typically we would use Webpack 5 to enable this to happen. But in the Angular world, it's probably going to be much easier out of the box because um, Angular is actually built in with a system for handling different modules and for doing dynamic and lazy loading, etc., etc. And in the React world, it isn't. Uh, in the React world, we are just dealing with a very simple, uh, you know, very simple markup system. React is really just a view layer uh, for an application. However, you can go and dial into something like Web Webpack and you can begin to do it. Uh, but again, this is going to be more complicated because you have to begin configuring everything um, but it, it certainly can be done and certainly we've uh, we've used tools like a uh, single uh, single SPA uh, to be to begin building uh, you know micro front ends and, and stuff like that for react so again and uh, it you know you can do these things but in react it's going to be uh, it's going to be a lot more difficult and um, testing is where it starts to get interesting um, because in the angular world we've got testing built in and the testing typically works with some tools that work at the component level and it will sort of go into the um, it will go into the markup etc and what's good about angular in the testing uh, world is that Angular has the dependency injection and container built into it. Um, in testing, testing is to get testing working well, it's critically important to be able to change dependencies. So for example, like I said to you about the um, about the time issue, we would want to be able to have um, we would want to have a good, you know, a close knitting uh, between our testing and our injection container so that we can lock certain things down in our test context. In React, it's typically we would see something like the React testing library. One of the uh, main sort of ways that we see advertised doing it is with snapshots. Um, however, this can be pretty dangerous, uh, in my opinion, of doing snapshots because what we get is we get a very tight coupling uh, between uh, the sort of object models we want to build and the HTML that's output, and that can make our testing very, uh, very brittle in the end, and it doesn't really scale well. So again, you can do it in React because we have to start going off and using other tools to do it. Uh, we can find the testing in, in the React. Uh, it can be a lot more complicated. And then of course we start to bring in extra complexity, you know, how do we test things like Redux and, you know, if Redux is wired up to the uh, React layer, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I would say again on this one, you know, Angular has, has, has got a better, you know, natural ability to, to do testing. The final bit before we just get into the quick, quick note on the paradigm is the markup. And really I would say this is where React starts to shine, okay? The fundamental difference between Angular and React really when you take out the equation, all this other stuff, that you can do in React, but that comes naturally sort of aspirated into the frame with, the, with the Angular, is that Angular uses the a template system. And what that means is that's ultimately strings, okay? It's ultimately uh, strings that you decorate and that you tell the framework, this is how I want it to look. The difference with React is that it uses a scoped uh, language, okay? Or it uses a scoped language extens extension called JSX, okay? And uh, JSX, will actually allow you, and this is the, the smart bit of it, will actually allow you to have JavaScript running in the template, which allows you to write uh, more expressive components because it actually, the language is built into the markup, which means that the markup can be more delicately interspersed with the sort of behavioral things that you might want from a, a component, okay? There are things that you can do in React that you simply cannot do with Angular's templating system. Uh, there are certain situations like recursion, etc, etc, that you can do much more eloquently with React. And with Angular, you will get down to the situation where you can often have a lot more duplication. So I normally find through the work that we've done as a consultancy and, you know, with the students that I teach in our academy that I'll um, mention in a second, um, we, we often find that this is, this is for people who uh, perhaps want to build, um, you know, are, are more interested in their UX and the UI and stuff like that and want to have better CSS 
uh, systems running, um, you know, such as SAS, um, is that the, you know they will naturally go down the React route if they want if they want this sort of thing. Um, and then you know, for people who just want to build more enterprisey apps, they they go down to Angular. Um, and the final bit of it really is the paradigm. The paradigm in both of these, it, you can do, you and I do recommend that you take both approaches. But in Angular, really, it's an OO first paradigm because it comes built with so much of this stuff for the enterprise, and then you use FP on top. In React, you're, you're really just starting with, uh, sorry, FP functional programming. And um, in the React world, you're starting with the functional programming side of things, and then you you may, and this is you know this is something that we recommend. You may then want to start to use OO as a paradigm and intermix it with the functional programming parts. The difference is that React starts at the component level as functionals uh, for, as a functional first uh, paradigm, and then you can go into using OO, and then you can also use FP inside it, and that's what we that's what we teach and that's what we recommend. Whereas as Angular starts very much from the OO perspective. So, you know, which one do I think is best? Well, okay, so I don't think either is best. I think it's the right tool for the job. However, what I will say, and this is the thing that you might not hear anybody say, is that I do recommend when you build a React app, is that you actually go and get all of these things sorted out and you pull them into the React app. You put a good injection container in, uh, you get, put a good validation forms uh, system in up front, you get it all working with the correct object model, and uh, you implement module federation, uh, you get a good policy for testing so that you can scale the testing and um, and that and that you know the markup obviously is, is better with react or can be better with react anyway and that finally you are very clear on the paradigm is that you don't just stick to one or the other you use the right blend of both approaches so if you'd like to learn more about these sort of architectural things that I'm talking about and how to do them in react apps and really what they're all about and you know what angular gives us that we can use in react that are fundamental to good software design and good UI architecture I'm running a free web training class this week in the web training class we're going to be going over three things firstly I'm going to teach you eight principles that you can use to scale up your UI apps and create better testing and architecture secondly I'm going to teach you a day-to-day -day developer process that you can use to write better UI apps in any framework whether you want to use angular or react and thirdly, I'm going to teach you how to make the transition from being a regular engineer who's sitting there and going, you know, which framework do I use and why are all these things important and should I use these things in React to being someone that intuitively knows about all these things and can build them, can scale them and can test them. So if you'd like to join me on this webinar, what you do is you click the link on or around this video and get taken through to another page, you pop your details in, sign up and I'll see you in the webinar. Cheers.